Here I hope to show you a tool which we uh, developed with a couple of other peoples. So it's, it's really a collaborative effort uh, to, to implement it in, in uh, neuroimaging. So uh, automatic analysis or AA is a neuroimaging pipeline uh, developed in MATLAB and it can process uh, various modalities and images like MRI images starting from structural fMRI, DTI or DKI images and magnetization transfer imaging as well as MEG and EEG data. It implements most functions from SPM and actually the development started like a, like a wrapper around SPM functions but uh, it also has interfaces to several functions of FSL and FreeSurfer and other uh, uh, solutions and tools which were developed either in our lab or uh, in other um, places. So for example, we have our own nonlinear fitting of diffusion tensor. Uh, the, diff uh, the diffusion Courtois imaging is also implemented uh, in our place, but for example, the GLM denoise and the motion fingerprint are came from uh, other people. The AA is available in, as a code in a GitHub, so it's an open source. And uh, a Docker container uh, is also in development in terms of the uh, Center of Reproducible Neuroscience project uh, uh, dealing with the BITS uh, apps. So AA uh, provides an automatic, transparent and replicable workflows because it's a collection of some best practices. It could be, of course, these recipes or task lists or workflows, as we call them. Uh, can increase continuously. It also captures some kind of provenance as you can see also in the figure and these provenance as well as the task list uh, can be recycled and, and uh, published as well. It's very efficient, uh, it supports parallel processing so all the modules which are, not independ which are independent for example across subjects or across sessions they can be run uh, parallel if you have a cluster configured uh, it also tracks the processes, so if it crashes for some reason or network issues, then it can just uh, pick up and start uh, from on. It uh, supports sites or study-specific configurations or defaults. You can even connect uh, particular workflows uh, from another AA analysis. Uh, one typical use case is if you have a multimodal study and you have a separate pipeline uh, or workflows for different modalities and just combine them. Uh, in one, or if you have a multimodal study, when you have a common processed uh, uh, pipe, uh, workflow and you provide the processed uh, data set and you want to fit different models to ask different scientific questions. So A is a high level implementation and uh, description of the analysis. Uh, it can be easily shared uh, or published. Um, it contains basically, it, it requires only two files uh, to run the analysis or specify the analysis and one is an XML based task list which describes a series of modules to be executed. It's uh, easy to edit and uh, easy to reorder and it just looks like, so it just looks like this. So it is describes all the steps, so starting from when you uh, identify your data in your database, it's a DICOM, you get the data and then you have a structural part, you have a functional part and, um, and so on. So let's say if you want to do, for example, slice timing before realign on warp, you just simply swap the two lines and, and that's it. And the other part of the code is the actual MATLAB script, which is a user master script, which is the MATLAB executable. And uh, this part, uh, is also just uh, at first it loads up the, uh, the task list and the configuration settings then you can modify the default settings which are stored in the XML files so you can have a different uh, smoothing if you want you can have a different uh, basis function for your model if you want and so on then you specify the, the where you want to put the analysis you add the data uh, you specify the model and run the analysis So the modules are uh, the independent units of the workflow. So it contains the header, uh, which defines the domain, so where the, uh, the actual module is executed, and which looks like this. So it tells you this is the realign unwarp module, so it works for every subject independently. It has an input of the API data in the field map and generates the output of the realign parameters uh, and so on. And there are the, the parameter defaults, which I loads up but these can be uh, customized in your user master script. 
And finally, so these, uh, these modules uh, are ensures also the independence, so then they, they can be uh, parallel processed in the cluster on the cloud. And the, the other part of the module is the actual M file, which runs this, uh, the whole settings and on the data. And um, they are also written in a way that it can be easily re uh, recycled. So if you have, for example, the same, like for example, smoothing is a typical example. It's a, it's, you per can perform the same operations on fMRI data or structural data. Then you can just write a new XML file to have a different inputs for your uh, script. So the streams, uh, what you saw, yes, they, they are the independent units of the data. So they are explicitly defined by the modules as their input and outputs. And they also represent the, the workflow and uh, also uh, captures some way of the provenance. So for example, again, if you focus back to the, the real and unwarp, uh, the real and unwarp um, module, then again, here you can see we take the field map. The field map comes from the field map to uh, VDM module. We take the API from the convert API module, and then we generate the mean API, which goes to co-registration. We generate the realignment parameter, which goes to the first level modeling, and we generate the API again, which goes to the slice timing. So again, this uh, represents the flow of the data, and it also helps to uh, define uh, how we want and distribute the jobs uh, for parallel computation. And as I said, because we just call the data as a streams, we refer to them. We don't have to worry about the file names. For example, when uh, you run SPM, then a certain, for example, after realignment, you have a prefix of U or R, depending on what kind of realignment you're using. And uh, again, uh, if you just uh, swap the modules, the module is just simply looking for the a API uh, stream, whatever file it is. So the input of the AA, the whole analysis, they can uh, start from scratch, start from DICOM data. It can also process the nifty data, and that's what the, the bits is also using. So it's also bit aware. So you can just simply take the bits referred before into A and do the analysis. And as we do simple two lines, you, you, you say which is the root directory of your bits. You use this command, which puts everything, structural, functional, field map, diffusion, into the pipeline. Uh, it will automatically add the subjects or the sessions that are available. You can specify whether if you have multiple sessions, you want to treat them as different subjects or you want to combine them in a within subject model. It also allows to subselect uh, different sets of subjects or sessions and it also adds all the events. And AA also has a bit export, which means that if you process your data in AA, starting from DICOM, for example, then you can just with one command uh, export all the raw data out of the bits and you can upload it. So for running, if you do the cluster execution, uh, then uh, it also allows you to monitor all the jobs which are there. So there's some nice GUI uh, which shows you all the jobs which are actually running. If you, it also gives the information about the cluster you are using and also of the independent jobs. The outputs, they are probably the most important part. Uh, the diagnostics, uh, which I think the one of the key uh, strength of AA. So it generates, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, between summaries, uh, between subject summaries and descriptive stats to identify the outliers. So for example, uh, for... Uh, for a motion correction summary, so it's just like block spots of all across the motion correction parameters. So you can easily, because one typical uh, thing, we, uh, so there is a so-called say rule of thumb, then we say, okay, if all the subjects have, uh, if the subject move more than two millimeter in one direction, then we consider it uh, an excessive motion. But what is more important is the heterogeneity in the data. So if your older subjects have a little motion, just even below half millimeter, and you have one subject who have moved, let's say, one and a half millimeter, it is also uh, a uh, heterogeneity which you uh, may need to tackle. And there is also a, a summary of uh, all the registrations. So you, can, uh, so you can easily just uh, browse through it and uh, uh, you can pick a subject which was not uh, registered properly and so on. So it also provides a, a graphical representation of all the, uh, the first level contrast uh, uh, with a, a log, est log, effici log uh, efficiency estimate. And most importantly, it also generates the activation maps overlaid uh, across all the three slices and axes. 
and uh, uh, it also uh, if you have a it also a free surfer module. So if you process, if you uh, set a module to process the uh, data in free surfer uh, within AA, then it can also combine the free surfer surface uh, with an activation map, and uh, it produces an activation map which can project it to the free surfer. So um, here you can, well, you can have all the uh, informations about AA. We have our website. Uh, we have our paper also out. And uh, you can find information on the GitHub and in the uh, Cambridge University, so the uh, MRC CBU wiki pages as well. And you can, of course, always ask the, the, the people who are developed uh, AA, and they're also keen to help you. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Tibor. Fascinating. I love that last slide. Um, Questions for people? Yes. Um, hi. Um, uh, this is very nice to see the development of the AA. I've been the early users of the wrapper back in Cambridge. Uh, so uh, my main thing was when we are really talking about bugs in the software and stuff like that, isn't learning a wrapper, even NePipe and other, is an additional layer for the end user and easy mistakes. I appreciate the uh, possibility of replicability, keeping record of your analysis. I'm with you with that. But what's your general comment about having you know additional wrappers around software where you do not know what's happening inside? I think it's a very important uh, uh, issue, and that was also mentioned in, in uh, uh, GB's talk about uh, when you're comparing uh, black boxes and, and glass boxes. And uh, uh, I think it's very important whenever you use a, a wrapper, whenever you use uh, some, then you always have to know what's happening in there. And I th think so. The wrapper has two uh, roles here. One is the, the easy uh, execution uh, of the program. So you don't have to know, for example, if you spe let's speak about SPM, the which button to click and uh, uh, where you can find the parameters. And the other thing is that in, when you use a wrapper or for, for example in AA, you have all your parameters defined in one place. So if you look at the, uh, if you remember the, the user master script, the whole script is basically doing nothing but filling up the AAP structure. And the actual running is just the last command which say A do processing and processing this AAP structure. So you can always go back and check all your parameters which were used by SPM. So in this case, you can always go back and see what was happening, what you, uh, you were using. But uh, I agree, and, and that's why the, the diagnostics are very important. So uh, when I first did the, the FSL course, for example, in 2009 in San Francisco, then the, one of the most uh, cited line in the talk was that always look at your data. And I think that's very important because then you can actually see uh, how your data is changing with each operation. And AE also has a module called the TSDFANA, which uh, performs some kind of a QAs, and this can be replicated uh, throughout the workflow. So you can see how your data looks like before motion correction, after motion correction, after slice timing, and so on. I have a, a contextual question. You describe a workflow, a generic workflow environment. How, how would you distinguish its, its characteristics from other workflow environments that are already out there, such as Lani Pipeline might be one example? Um, I think um, they, they always serve the similar or same purposes, and they are, again, a bit uh, the different efforts and not the... Um, um, so they all, they all of them have different strengths and different uh, features. And if you say, for example, Lonely Pipeline, I, 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 I saw it that as well when I was in, in uh, UCLA. And I think it's also uh, quite impressive uh, with all the GUIs and, and, and clicking. Uh, uh, and uh, it probably has an easy start. Um, but uh, what uh, I think is the most uh, direct, you may say competitor, I would say most closest kin is the Nightpipe, for example, which is a Python based. And uh, uh, I think it's more about what you get really used to and what your main analysis. So uh, a night pipe, for example, is mostly based on FSL and all the FSL functionalities, although, again, it's can use SPM too. And, and AA, for example, is more focused on SPM. 
and uh, and uses the uh, the FSL function too. But uh, it's it's I think it's more like a, like a pragmatic choice uh, uh, which you are uh, more used to. And uh, I think the most important thing uh, again the interoperability. I don't think that they are. Uh, uh, there is one uh, for all, or, or or one one winner here. So like there, are, there is FSL, there is SPM. Again, we could ask what is the difference between FSL and SPM or Brain Voyager. So again, if you can see a comparison, Brain Voyager is like the it's more similar to again the in philosophy to to Lonely Pipeline, uh, as I can see. And uh, I think the main question is if you can find some kind of interoperability uh, between them.